Hello everyone. So today we're going to check out Hunyuan video using the video to video method. Now, I think this is the first time I'm talking about the video to video technique in Hunyuan video because, well, at the beginning when Hunyuan video launched last month, we saw the rapper nodes from KJ that did the very raw style of video to video method using his node. But then I found out that right now we have flow edit and we can use flow edit and integrate it or make combinations with the updated comfy UI working natively with the comfy UI mode loader nodes to run Hunyuan video with video to video style transfer or I should say motion transfer in the video to video method for Hunyuan video. So as you can see right here, I've got a guy walking on the street and I've transformed this motion into a woman in a party hallway walking, something like that. I also have some examples here doing TikTok dance animations where I've simulated those movements and transformed them into other styles. We've also got many other action movements that can be used just by transforming images into text prompts, bringing the style of the output into what we see in the generated videos. For example, like this one, this is actually walking in a hallway, and we've got more motions of walking in the same hallway from the source video that I'll show. Just by doing some prompt editing or using an image as a reference for the context, we're able to bring it into another style and video as the generated result. So, let's check it out. I've talked about flow edit before, and before that, we had RF inversion, which is able to edit your image. Now, with video to video, the video image frames are transferred into another style. Flow edit also has a similar mechanism to work around your image or video editing, whether it's specific objects or backgrounds, anything on the screen. But then I found out that flow edit runs faster without using two sampling steps processing, like the unsampling and RF inversion. So. I've recently started to prefer using flow edit for video to video, not only in Hunyuan video but also in LTX as well. The comfy UI node I want to talk about today is from the author who created the previous nodes for flow edit and RF inversion. He also created the comfy UI Hunyuan loop. This one is going to use flow edit for videos in the Hunyuan video model. As you can see, there are some sample examples here, and it shows how it transforms from a start sigma to an end sigma using the flow edit technique. Right here, it shows some settings that we have to be aware of in order to make it work. So to do this first, go and download this GitHub project into your custom nodes folder in Comfy UI. You can copy this link, it's not in the custom nodes manager yet, so it's a pretty new thing. Maybe it's not listed yet in the Comfy UI manager, but that's okay. We can take a look at the existing workflow that it provides in this custom nodes folder. So what you can do is go to the custom nodes here. We've got the example workflows where I've dragged all these two examples, the HY workflow edit and the other one, the wrapper examples of the workflow edit. Now, I want to show it right here because in this diagram we've got the red box. That's because I've disabled the Hunyuan video wrapper, which, as you know, was developed by KJ Node, but I tend to, I tend not to prefer using the wrapper custom nodes to generate videos. While it consumes more memory and sometimes it takes longer to do the encoding and decoding process in there. So far, from what I've tested, I feel like this isn't the right way for me at least. But, you know, for critical thinking, as I've analyzed and I prefer to use the native node for model loader clip encoding and decoding to run it right here, I'm just trying to minimize, you know, whatever can run natively. I'll use the native nodes to run in Comfy UI, like this one. So this diagram is going to use the Ecto Flow Edit Guider. This is the package I just mentioned in the GitHub project. After you download it, you'll see some names at the top. If you set your Comfy UI to show the names of the custom nodes package, you'll see that very easily. Then it's a similar flow edit mechanism to the LTX Edit Flow VDV that I talked about in previous videos, where it's using the flow edit sampler and doing the sampling, of course. But then we use the disabled noise to avoid adding any sampling noise or seed numbers. Yeah, those settings into the sampler custom nodes. The flow edit guider is something we have to implement because it's very important. This is where we're able to use the source conditions and the target conditions. As we saw in LTX videos, when using flow edit for video to video, it also has the same structure where we have two sets of text prompts. In Hunyuan video, we also need the same structure with two sets of text prompts. The first one at the top is for the source videos. It's like providing some information for the AI to understand the context from the text prompt. So it's like a guide. 
The source condition, of course, is your input video from the beginning here, but then the target condition is where you decide how you want to modify or edit the videos, the motions following through the source videos, but then editing the objects, how they're going to look, and, you know, the background of the videos. You can edit all that in the target conditions. And right now, in the basic workflow here, we can see it's using text prompts only. Yeah, so that's how we can do it. Very simple. And the generation time, I see it's faster than the unsampling and sampling method, and also faster than the RF inversion method. That's because we don't need two types of samplings going through, like 10 steps and then 20 steps, another round and so on. We only need one sampling round here to do the processing, and then we'll get the decoded sampling data. So, flow edit is faster to process stuff, we don't have to wait double the time, and it's also easier to set up and maintain the workflow structures. So, let's say I've got all these examples that I showed at the beginning of the video, and I can see... For example, like this one, let's say we do examples here and then you'll see how that looks right there. We've got these examples. So for example, okay, we've got this example of the guy walking in the back alley of a back street. Then we pass that through the VIE encode. And I see that this workflow actually doesn't use the VIE encode tile. It's only using the decode with tile to, you know, minimize the memory usage during decoding. But that's still a good sign to use it like this. And I've modified the style text prompts. I'd say this is the target condition where I've prompted a survival carrier backpack with an axe walking in a collapsed city. So there'll be a change in this video going to another style here. I've set it to 49 frames just for demo purposes. Then we can check it out in the nodes here. For the load diffusion, it's very typical. We use the Honyuan videos and also the clip loader. We've got all this included here. For Lava, I use the FP8 Lama safe tensor files. Okay, and then right here, let's give it a try. Okay, so we've got the first video generated, and as you can see, it's so blurry and doesn't... I mean, it's not. I shouldn't say it's blurry. It's not in the formation of any objects yet. The decoding looks like it's not finished, or the sampling isn't complete. And why is that? Because when you first load the example workflow, You'll see these nodes here, the skip steps and the drift steps. These are the most important things you have to set up before running anything when doing the settings overview. The author has mentioned this on the GitHub page, so read that and follow what's suggested. You know, don't act like a zombie just clicking download and trying to run things without thinking. You have to do some settings before you get your results generated. I've already done a test here. So don't just run this workflow with all the default values and think it'll work for you. The skip step setting is for your source videos. It determines how many sampling steps to skip before it injects the flow edit sampler, etc. As for the drift setting, I've found that using the same number of steps as the basic scheduler works fine. For example, if I've got a scheduler step of 30, I set this to the same number. It's the same concept as in the LTX videos using flow edit V2V in the previous videos I've done. For skip steps, I like to use zero because I want the source videos to look totally different from what I see in them. So these are the two numbers you'll mostly interact with in the flow edit video to video example workflow. The second thing you'll work on a lot is the denoise setting. You can set it from one to zero, but I tend to set it to 0 0.7 or 0 0.8. That's the range I like to use mostly for flow edit. This way, it'll retain some shape and form of the source videos, but will change the style of the output videos, how it looks, etc. So let's run this again, and we'll see the output with a different result. I won't change the text prompts here, we're still using the same video. Let's check it out. Okay, the result just finished, and we can see it looks totally different compared to the first one, which was blurry and didn't even form the character shape. Now, we've got it running fully with 30 steps, and the motions are coming from the video here. Let's bring both the source and output videos down here, and you'll see how it looks. The guy is moving from the back alley, and now I've changed the background to a collapsed city. The elements like the axe and the backpack in the animated video come from the text prompts I use for the target conditions. This thing is very simple to understand. It's more beginner-friendly, I'd say, compared to the unsampling, sampling, and RF inversion methods. There are so many fancy technical terms you have to know about in those methods, but with FlowEdit, it's quite friendly for a lot of people. It's easier to pick up with fewer settings you need to understand. 
Of course, if you need to dive deeper, you'll have to understand how flow edit works, how to use the shift and some guidance numbers to tweak things a little, but not too much, to create a totally different effect in the generated videos. So this is the base example workflow from the custom nodes, and it's already able to generate video to video results like this. I've also done some enhancements to the workflow, of course, based on this flow edit workflow. I've made it easier to configure all the steps and grouped everything together, making it simpler to see the results side by side. I've also summarized all the settings you need to adjust in this group called settings, where you input the length. As you can see in my last save video, I set it to 200 frames using Hunyuan video. There won't be any problems with my settings. I'm using an NVIDIA 4090, but if you're using a Potato GPU with low VRAM, it might not be able to run 200 frames. Maybe less. Who knows, right? You'll have to test your range again. Along with the steps and drift steps, I've input the numbers here to make it easier to modify whatever settings you want because it can look messy if you don't know what all the terms in flow edit mean. So I've grouped them here and we've got the source videos, but I think that would be ideal to help make the motions more accurate using flow edit and all the conditioning here. It would make the ratios, like the body proportions and wall elements more precise. But so far, I've seen that the text prompts have followed what I've required. In this input text prompt, I described a pink shirt lady at a party with some light effects in the hallway, like a disco or wave party. It's showing something like that. So I played around with the hallway effects, creating a dark atmosphere with heavy light color effects, and it shows in some of the backgrounds here. And that's how I did it using video to video with flow edit. And of course, there's, there's a lot of enhancement you can do in this workflow. This is just an example of how we can use flow edit for video to video using Hunyuan video AI models. Hopefully, they'll release the image to video model weights soon because currently we're using the text to video model weights for Hunyuan video. As you can see, it's labeled T2V. A lot of people have asked why we can't input an image for generating videos in Hunyuan video. That's because these are two different things. Text to video and image to video are two types of model weights. You have to know this when playing around with AI. So I've made another custom node that uses a guidance inference for this purpose. I've actually created a custom node, which I'll explain in another video, that uses an image as a guide to influence how the video is generated. In this setup, I've duplicated different numbers of frames and included X, Y, and zoom in slash out controls. You can set the range from one to zero for zoom in and one to minus 0.5 for zoom out. That's how I use this to create a camera panning effect. And of course, we have to resize the image before passing it into the VAE encode. So I've done the resizing for the target image. We can keep the custom ratio and set the custom size like this. I'm using this ratio size and we can crop the center of the image just like we usually do with the resize image node. But then I've combined that into the Hanyuan video image guider. For example, with this image, it'll duplicate it 10 times. Or, in another case, if I'm doing 49 frames, it'll duplicate it 49 times. Then it passes that into the VAE encode, allowing the sampling to create different animations with those 49 frames. It's the same concept as what we have in Hunyuan video for the video-to-video -video method, where we duplicate a certain number of frames from the video input and manipulate the image frames during the sampling steps. So, it's the same concept here with the image-to-video custom node. I'll talk about this in another video, and you can check it out then. So, this is Flow Edit. We've got some very cool stuff going on this year with a lot of new AI models. Check it out. We'll also have NVIDIA Cosmo in the upcoming videos, and I'll talk about that soon. So, see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.